After an accident caused delays to our camping trip, we arrived at Diamond Lake just before sunset. Under the fading light we made dinner then quickly retreated into the safety of our camper vans from the sand flies which are known to be prevalent at dusk. Our kayaking plans had to be put off until the following morning. Alright, this is a rare sight, Miranda cooking. <laughs> Look at me! I know, this is evidence that it happens. We headed out onto the lake after breakfast. I'll see you guys in a few hours, alright? Lake paradise. Did you expect so many sand flies in paradise? Combating strong winds, we occasionally rested to admire the beautiful mountains in the backdrop and make up the surrounding Mount Aspiring National Park in a region known as paradise. Paradise, cheeky. There's a bit of contention about how Paradise got its name. An article from 1860 supports the theory that it was named after its natural beauty. And we've got a black swan. Two black swans. Another theory is that it is named after its abundance of Paradise shell ducks, of which we saw many on Diamond Lake. We also saw families of black swans on the lake. Interestingly, the native New Zealand black swans were hunted to extinction by the first Polynesians to arrive in New Zealand about 600 to 700 years ago. They were slightly larger and less capable of flying for extended periods of time than the current swans that reside, which were introduced from Australia in the 1860s. Although closely related to the original swans of New Zealand, there is a debate whether or not the current black swan population, which is approximately 50,000 in numbers, should be considered native. After an hour or so in the lake, we headed back in and made our way to the start of the Ernest Law Burn track nearby. Chico started off on her adventure. The Ernst Law Burn is effectively a trail that follows a clear freshwater river to the heart of Mount Ernst Law, fed by its impressive glacier. A burn is actually a Gaelic Scottish word for a freshwater stream, and like the nearby township of Glenorchy, was named by Scottish immigrants to the area in the 1860s. The trail itself was in fairly harsh condition. Many areas were covered in deep mud with countless fallen trees and stream crossings. We took a break for lunch on some fallen trees, then continued on our journey up through the thick beech forest. You ready? Glasses. You got your glasses? The name Mount Ernstlaw was given by a surveyor, J.T. Thompson, whose father came from the village of Ernstlaw in England. The local Māori people of the Naitahu tribe have a long historical association with the mountain, which they gave their name Pikira Katahi. They had a legend that during its formation, a wedge of greenstone known as Punamu was inserted into the mountain and stood as a guardian to the area, which was commonly used by the people in search of the precious Punamu. After six hours or so of hiking through harsh conditions, we finally arrived. I had an opportunity to view the glacier itself before returning back to the valley to set up camp in the rain. It's the most beautiful place I've ever been to in my whole entire life. Going to see the glacier. We woke up to blue skies and sunshine. With excitement, we made our way up to the glacial basin. A six kilometer round trip journey to and from camp through conditions that left the trail unrecognizable in many areas. Passing through high grass, scrubby bushland and rocky country, we arrived in the glacial basin. The valley was lined in cascading waterfalls that had to have reached the hundreds in number. The glacier itself glistened in the sunlight and rose up high in the distance, which spurred our energy to keep on traveling through the long grass and the mud. So Miranda got the old muddy shoe. You want to show me your muddy shoe? Nice. That's after I washed it in the river. It's the muddy shoe. It's easy to see why Peter Jackson was inspired to use the Ernstlaw Burn and Glacier as a filming location in his multi-award winning Lord of the Rings trilogy and Hobbit series for the Misty Mountains. It can be seen as the peak of Caradras in the Fellowship of the Ring, as the Fellowship make their way over a high snowy pass. Sean Bean, who played Boromir, was so terrified of the helicopter flight that he refused to ride in a helicopter again afterwards. 
His tense glare can be seen in the film as he picks up the ring in the snow. The glacier can be seen in the background of an unexpected journey as Bilbo and the dwarves leave Rivendell and head for the Misty Mountains. Miranda needed a break close to the end, but I had the urge to continue on. Nothing can compare to the sight up close. So now I'm travelling solo. Miranda's back there waiting for me in the bag. This is where I'm heading. Right up. The valley walls stood high above like towering giants, as countless waterfalls cascaded all around like tears, spraying me with cool wet air. They almost seemed to move in slow motion due to their long drops from the melting glacier. So I made it all the way to the top, and it did not disappoint. As I said yesterday, this is uh, potentially the most beautiful place I've ever been to. The walk back was an excessively slow 12 and a half kilometers to the start, but the journey was worth it just to say I've stood among giants and felt their tears.